Hello, it's good to see you again. It's nice to have this opportunity to come and talk to you, uh, if not face to face, at least eyeball to eyeball through this medium. And uh, I wanted to read a scripture and try to give you a word of encouragement in the midst of all that's happening in our culture. I, I know that you're probably like me, you're certainly disappointed and maybe unsettled, even maybe fearful, as I am at times, about where our beloved country's headed. Uh, we seem to have had one uh, riot or demonstration or um, disturbance in the streets after another. Uh, and it makes us wonder just what's happening to our country. Um, and so I wanted to read you a little uh, scripture or two from um, John's first letter. First John chapter 2, beginning of verse 15. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And listen to this. And the world is passing away in all of its lust, but the one who does the will of God will abide forever. It's easy for me, easy for you to love the world uh, uh, for obvious reasons. First of all, the world that God has created for us is a beautiful world. And there are many good things, more good things in it, I think, than bad. Uh, it's the only home we've ever known. Uh, the thought of not being in this world and not being in America, which is probably uh, one of the blessed, if not the nicest nation in the world to live in, is kind of difficult for us to think about. And the third thing is that we're worldlings. We were made by God as creatures who are time and space bound. We were made for the earth. Just as the angels were made for heaven, we were made for this realm. And so, in not loving the world, we're kind of going against, at least it feels like we're going against the very nature that is natural to us. But when John talks about the world, he's not talking about the earth. He always uses the word world to mean a system of mankind that is organized against Christ and his kingdom and the will of God. So it's the world that we see in corrupt politics. It's the world that we see in a dishonest and manipulative media. It's the world that voices its opinions at our universities. It's the world that gives us an alternative story, another narrative out of Hollywood. It's not what God created, but what men have distorted. And we, you and I are called not to love these things, uh, but to love the kingdom of God. To love uh, not the lust of the flesh, but to celebrate the joy of life in our bodies. Uh, not to go after the lust of the eyes, what we see, which is covetousness, but to be grateful for what God has given us. And not to have a pride in life, a pride in accomplishments, a pride in wealth, a pride in beauty, a pride in success or academic accomplishments, but to boast in Christ. That's what we're to do. Because, here's the bone-chilling reality, this system of the world is passing away. And the one who does the will of God will abide forever in the new world. It says, if, and Jesus used this phrase, we are living in a world that is in the midst of birth pangs. It is struggling in the pain that simultaneously something is dying, the world. But something else is being born again in its place, the new heaven and the new earth. Or to put it in the terms of Revelation, the kingdom of this world is passing away because the kingdom of Christ is beginning to take possession of the creation of God, including you and me and our beloved, our, our beloved families. And so, as difficult as it may be, it is a good thing to pray in these days that Christ, through the Holy Spirit, would help to make us think and feel and react as a citizen of a new kingdom rather than to bemoan the fact that our old world of America is dying. I don't even like to say that. It is my earnest prayer that God would send us, and I ask that you pray with me, a great spiritual awakening so that there's a spiritual returning to Christ and the church and to the things of God in our America, and we can go back to the old days when we were more like that. But if that doesn't happen, you and I are invested in something that's not passing away, 
but something that's being born again. That's what John says. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away, and behold, new things are coming. We usually interpret that verse meaning that once we're born again, the old sinful habits pass away, and a new way of life and living and loving comes. And that is true. But it has a more eschatological, a bigger meaning also. The old things of the world, the world itself is passing away, and new things have come, a new world. And for you and I to be ready for that new world and to be happy in that new world, we have to be made new creatures, which means that each one of us, there has to be these birth pangs of things that we once loved that are being replaced by the things that Christ loved, things that in the world were our identity, our uh, our go-to uh, things that we rely upon are passing away, and something new is coming, a deeper relationship with God in the Spirit. So I wanted to encourage you to be in prayer for our country, uh, to not be surprised that it's happening because, brothers and sisters, it's happening all over the world. All the kingdoms of the world are crumbling as Christ's kingdom is being born and growing. And to know that uh, we have a choice. We can invest all of our affections and hopes and dreams and, and, and joys in something that's passing away or in something that will last forever. And you know which is the better choice that to Christ and I commend to you. Have a blessed week, and I hope to see you next week uh, through this meeting as well. God bless you.